Simulation Theory, Chapter 5 by Jonathan Lippi, Part 3, Aliens and Bizarre Technology Dreams. Holographic Computer Dream. I had a dream I was in an alien spaceship, and the whole ship was controlled by a holographic computer. The computer looked like a vertical cylinder whose height was from the floor to the ceiling of the ship and was a hologram. The storage drives were green CDs that were the size of Frisbees and looked like mini flying saucers. The programming language interface was an octagon color palette similar to what it looks like in Microsoft software when you change the color of a font or a background. Different combinations of the series of colors are what caused all of the programs to work and the ship to run. Then I woke up. Aliens on the beach. I was sitting on the beach during the day with my buddy Mike. We were studying for a math exam or something. Suddenly, the entire sky and our surroundings went black. In the sky appeared this giant salt shaker shaped alien spacecraft and it was rapidly blinking with the colors of a magnificent strobolite lighting up the sky each blink with the whitish gray colors that emit from strobolites. The craft hovered closer to us and took Mike into the ship and flew off very fast. I was there by myself for only a few moments when the ship returned and let Mike back onto the beach. Mike returned with special powers. UFO DVD Drive I was in front of my house when an alien spacecraft landed. It released a CD-ROM drive. I happened to have a CD in my pocket that contained the majority of my creative works in it and put it into the CD drive and closed it. The spaceship flew off afterwards. As the ship lifted off, it revealed a bird that had wings that were decorated as newspaper articles. It flew off. UFOs over Disney I was walking my buddy Mike out of my house because he was going to drive back to college when in the distance we see some spaceships flying around in what we imagine to be Disney World in Orlando. I don't think it's possible to see Orlando from Fort Lauderdale, but it's a dream. They hover above Disney, and the one in the middle shoots a laser weapon down like they did in Independence Day. Then they sent down the beam to suck things up, and they sucked up a bunch of stuff from Disney. Then they began flying toward where we live. Mike turned to me and said very seriously, John, are you ready to go to space? I said to him, I don't think we have much of a choice. They flew by, but I guess they had too many things sucked up on board from Disney that they flew away. We called the police to follow a report, and they didn't believe us. I asked to be put through to Peter Davenport at New Fork, but my mouth was becoming incredibly dry, and when Davenport picked up, I couldn't speak because my tongue had become so dry. I woke up and drank some Gatorade. Mini Planet Dream The front cover to my last book, I remember choosing my life in the afterlife dimension, depicted me surrounded by mini planet Earths. This cover was inspired by a dream I had. I was walking in an open plain where there were many mini planet Earths hovering. The planets were emitting a gas that was harmful to Earth. Simultaneously, while walking through the planets, I heard a news discussion playing out on television about should we destroy the planets because they were polluting our atmosphere? The debate against destroying the planets were that our own Earth was probably emitting some poison into the solar system, and we wouldn't want someone destroying our planet because of our natural radiation. It was an interesting experience to walk through and touch those planets, and the debate on whether they should be allowed to exist or not was interesting. They just hovered and rotated there in that field. What is a planet? Miscellaneous Dreams China Invasion Dream I was at a crosswalk in Tampa when I saw a police officer get a call on his radio that said we were under attack by the Chinese, that they had already taken over Washington, D.C., and they had launched an all-out invasion on the United States and were about to hit the east coast of Florida. Tampa is on the west coast. Sirens went off and everyone started running up the hill. I couldn't believe what was happening, that we had been taken over. How could that happen? As I was running up the hill, some homeless people just sat there like it didn't matter, and other people running up the hill were asking them why they weren't running too. They said they may have a better life under the Chinese rule. Why run? Then he asked where we were going to run to. There was nowhere to hide. Preschool Planet Dream I was back at my preschool, and the teacher had this giant mini planet Earth. It was a real planet, not a globe. It was roped off from the rest of the students. 
It was the size of a person. It was rotating. There was a kid that kept looking at the planet and looking back at me and my cousin and would laugh. He kept looking at the planet and laughing like he was going to do something naughty. He pulled out a pencil and started inching it closer and closer to the planet and giggling to himself in an insane way harder and harder. He kept looking back at us with a, you dare me? You dare me? Look on his face. Then he stuck the pencil into the planet and it got chopped off. The kid looked at us with amazement at what he could try next. He again gave us this look of, wait until you see what I do next. He stuck out his index finger and in slow motion moved it towards the planet. My cousin and I kept shaking our heads in slow motion signaling, no, don't do it, bro. And the kid kept nodding his head, oh yes, I am. He kept bringing his finger closer until it got into the planet. The planet burnt and ripped off the top of his finger. The kid pulled his finger back and winced and laughed at the same time. There was more to the dream, but that is all I remember. Rise, jerk offs, dream. I was in high school. It was a weeknight, and Ryan and I were finishing up a project that was due the next day. I was already past my bedtime and was mad that I'd be all tired the next day in school. We were in the office room. The windows were open because it was winter and the blinds were moving back and forth because of the wind. For some reason, we didn't have the lights in the office on. We were using the lighting from the other rooms. This made it hard to see the project we were working on. Suddenly, we heard the most booming voice I have ever heard in my life. It was deep, dark, and scary, and louder than you can imagine. The voice said, Rise, jerk-offs! At that point, I turned around to go run to my father, who was in the other room watching television. He heard the voice, too, and stood up and turned around to see me running to him. He said, Well, I hope you had a good ride, because it looks like it's over. I asked if he could do anything to make the scary voice and inevitable doom go away, and he said, I think this one is beyond what I can do anything about. You had to know this day would come. Just prepare yourself for the end, because this looks like the game is over. The roof came off of my house, and I woke up. Mind playing tricks dream. I was at a party in college, and the people at the party were doing group karaoke to the song by The Ghetto Boys, My Mind Is Playing Tricks On Me. During the chorus, everyone whistled the tune. Picture a whole house of college students whistling the chorus to My Mind Is Playing Tricks On Me. I woke up laughing. It was great. It was hilarious. I hope to do that one day in real life. But I don't know if I'll ever find a group of people who know that song, though. Fire Phone Dream Talia had a dream where all of the cell phones had flaming fire backgrounds where you type the phone number. Club Geronimo Dream I was having a normal, boring dream, and Jeff somehow appeared, and he was wearing a cryptic shirt with backwards letters. He said excitedly, Bro, I was just hanging out with Jordan Prisine. We went to this nightclub, but it's like all Da Vinci Code themed with all ancient Catholic imagery. Anyways, me and Jordan start dancing around the room all drunk and we're touching all the neat stuff they had in the place like naked statues. Jordan touches this lever in the wall, and when lo and behold, it reveals a secret room. We're thinking, hell yeah, we're going in. The room we enter is like this secret ritual meeting, and instead of techno music, it's surround sound monks chanting music. Jordan sees this giant holy cross jewelry charm, picks it up, runs into the middle of the room, and drops to his knees in a rock star power slide and yells, Christ! Some guy in a robe walks up to him and does one of these, whacks him in the back of the head, and tells him, you don't do that in this room. I woke up laughing. Dreams that I can't remember the details to. I keep a notebook by my bed. When I wake up from the dreams I have, I write down notes about them in hopes that later on in my waking state I would remember the details. Usually I write these down half awake and in the dark. Because I'll end up going back to sleep, I'll forget all about the dream I just had. So here are the notes that I have left over that I don't remember anything about, don't even remember writing them, but yet it's in my handwriting. But here are the notes. Make what you can of them. Saturn Dream I just remember being on the moon of Saturn 
and was amazed at how beautiful the planet looked so close up and thought how cool it is for the beings that live on that moon to be able to see Saturn every day. Alien Space Station Brotherhood There was a special logo on the ship. It was revealed that there were more aliens than humans on the ship. Matching Tattoo Dream A bunch of people all gathered at an alien spaceship and they all had the same tattoo. Football Hamsters I had a dream of a video game with hamsters as the players. It was funny to watch them get into the three-point stance. Dinosaur Dream I was visiting my friend Matt's house and he had T-Rexes in his basement. While this sounds funny, let me assure you, it was frightening. Him and Balky had the technology to tap into people's television sets and see inside their homes. Beanstalk in Grandma's Backyard I found a beanstalk in my grandmother's backyard and wondered how I had never seen it before. I climbed up it. When I got to the top, there was a floor made of clouds. I walked on the clouds. I can't remember what else happened. Happy Analza. I was on a field trip to the core of the earth with my middle school. As we were walking, a fortune teller lady named Happy Analza said, Come here, little boy. I walked up to her. She asked me if I wanted to see what lies behind the gates of hell. I said, sure, why not? She opened the door, and then I woke up. I used a barcode as a cell phone. It was Talia calling me. I thought it was weird that the barcode was ringing, so I touched it and said, hello, and put my ear to it on the box and it was on and tried talking. She told me Mark Wahlberg wanted to talk to me and put him on the phone. I thought it to be so weird that I woke up. One time, I was walking around my block, and suddenly, the Triforce from The Legend of Zelda appeared to me in the sky and was pulsating, and I felt connected to it. Recurring Dreams or Themes I'll be on space missions as the head captain of the ship, and I'll get to space and realize that I don't know how to get back into Earth. I don't know the angle of descent to take or how to land the ship, and everyone else on the ship with me doesn't know either, so we're stuck in space. I have a lot of dreams where I'm in a record store or a video store and can see albums by famous artists that never came out in real life. I pick the CD up and wonder how come I had never heard of the album. I read the song titles and wonder how it is that I never heard the songs. And I'll even bring it to the listening station and listen to the songs that don't exist in real life. Sometimes the songs are really good and I'm upset when I wake up that the songs don't exist. The same similar thing goes for movies. I've also played video games that don't exist. It's amazing how they're playable, or the songs are listenable, or the movies are watchable. The plots that play out in these movies, my conscious mind would never think of. I figure out how to glide, float, fly, or super jump. I don't get to fly like a bird, but just kind of float. Usually I have a running start. Usually I feel the need to show my ability to others in the dream and try to teach them how. I showed Will Smith that I knew how to float one time. I'll also read books in my dreams. I have no idea where the words come from, but I've read entire chapters in my dreams. I've read ancient scrolls, constitutions, instruction manuals. I've read all sorts of bizarre things. Jeff's dreams. Jeff lives one block from me. There must be something in the water that causes us both to have vivid cinematic dreams. We're both into computer stuff. Most of his dreams are actually better than mine, or just as cool. Writing these, I'm working off of what I remember him telling me from our conversations. Airplanes frozen in time, midair, unknown phenomena. Jeff is on an airplane with his brother and parents. Everything seems normal. He's watching the other planes taxi and take off. Suddenly, he notices the plane in front of them takes off, but then gets stuck in midair. He points it out to his father, and his father isn't too concerned about it. Then, their airplane begins to take off. They also get stuck in midair. The captain of the airplane gets on the intercom and says with the calm airplane voice, Attention passengers, please remain in your seats. We are experiencing an unknown phenomena. Jeff is looking around the plane, and everyone is okay with the situation. He is concerned. He uses his credit card to make a flight call on the flight phone attached to the seat in front of him. And in his conversation with the operator, the operator says to him, I'm sorry, sir. I do not have any further information. We are experiencing 
and unknown phenomena. The lights black out on the airplane, and when they turn back on, he is in an underground quarantine base. Everyone is walking around in biological protection suits. He asks what is going on, and they say, an unknown phenomenon has occurred. At that point, he wakes up. Airplanes crashing. Jeff had a recurring dream prior to 9-11 of a plane crashing into one of the lakes by our house. He said the plane comes so close that he could read the number of the plane underneath, but could never remember it by the time he wakes up. Dead bodies in lake. It is nighttime, and Jeff notices there are FBI agents walking around his house and near his lake. He goes outside to find out what is going on, and they tell him to go back inside. He sees that there are a bunch of dead bodies in the lake. They've all sunk to the bottom and weren't floating on the surface. He sees the FBI agents taking the bodies out of the lake, and they notice he is watching, and then try to prevent him from seeing what is happening and order him back into his house again. Operation Slip Disc Neither Jeff, Mike, nor I can remember the details of this dream, except that something happened called Operation Slip Disc. Time slowing down. Jeff wakes up and it's a normal day. His mom is cooking breakfast. He sees an envelope on the table that was supposed to contain within it his work schedule. He opened it up and it contained a picture of a spaceship and a website URL. He went to his computer and typed the URL into his browser. The website contained information on how to build a spaceship. Suddenly the power goes out and he finds himself on his bed with his heart pounding. He goes outside. People are walking in slow motion. He walks to the intersection and sees the stoplights are all blinking yellow. I can't remember the rest. These dreams all seem to interconnect somehow. This next dream was emailed to me from Jeff. Aliens Attack South Florida by Jeff It's a typical South Florida evening, cool breeze and bright moon. I decide to go shopping for a new flat panel TV to use for my Xbox 360 gaming. I arrive at a mom and pop TV shop that is located off of I-595 somewhere and begin to look at the various TVs available. I compare the specs on several units and look into this cool satellite system that they were offering. The advertisement says that it gives you 130 channels of HD content for only $49.99 per month. I think, wow, that's pretty cool, and begin to look at the satellite receiver and cables. I hear the faint sound of car horns, which seem to be constant, and think nothing of it. Several minutes later, the faint car horns turn into a roar of horns that sound like they are coming from right outside the shop. I take a step out of the shop and realize that there is smoke on the horizon. The cool breeze has calmed, and everything seems hazy outside now. I figure everyone is honking due to an accident that has blocked traffic. With TV and satellite information in hand, I decide to go home and do some research on the internet before I buy. I get in the car and tune the radio to 610 WIOD. Dave Lamont is on the radio, which seems normal to me in the dream. He is a morning host. The first thing I hear out of his mouth is, Attacking! And we don't know whether President Wade is alive or not. They have taken her to the nearest hospital from what we understand. The radio signal is fading in and out of static at this point and I begin to get really nervous. I try to tune to several different radio stations to no avail. My phone begins to receive text messages and emails on a large scale. One of the messages reads, They're here! Instantly I go into survival mode. I call my family to see if they are okay, but the cell lines are busy. I send a text message to Stephanie, and she responds that they are okay, and that they were watching the whole thing unfold on TV. I send a message back and ask who was attacking. She says she doesn't know because the TV is cutting in and out. I put the car into drive and decide I'm going to head out to Port Everglades to pick up some two-way radios and chargers so I can communicate with those I need to. I realize there is a major traffic jam on the street I'm on, so I decide to go off-road. I look down at my gas gauge and realize that I'm close to empty. I decide that I better fill up now if we are being attacked and pull into the gas station. The price reads $6 a gallon. I think to myself, damn, they have already raised the prices due to the attack and proceed to fill up. I then exit the gas station and jump onto I-595 and proceed eastbound towards the port. There are car wrecks all along the highway and people are screaming for help. I glance up at the skyline 
and the bright moon is being blocked out by circular objects that seem to be rising from the ocean. I continue onwards past I-95 and come alongside the Fort Lauderdale airport. I notice an airplane trying to land, but it comes down too hard and sparks are flying out from near the landing gear. I look back up into the sky and see circle-like craft rising from the ocean. They are silver and bluish in color, and water streams off them, glistening in the moonlight. My alarm goes off at 5.45 a.m. to wake me for work. This concludes Chapter 5 in its entirety. Thoughts from the author. What I liked about this chapter was that the dreams were like short stories. So just in case you bought the book in hopes of reading a story, you at least got this chapter where it was fiction. Because I know a lot of people bought it and they were expecting like a science fiction novel and they got what was presented like a non-fiction novel. So at least this dreams chapter is a whole bunch of short stories. It's amazing how they all have so much detail to them. And this chapter provides diversity and I think I had mentioned it before how the book is kind of like a variety show. And this chapter certainly is uh, unique in its own right. I think it's good for everybody should capture their dreams. You, know, you never know what kind of clues you'll find out about your subconscious. Um, for me and, and Jeff, uh, we just have really cool dreams and they're fun to have and it makes it really hard to want to get up in the morning because you just you don't want that dream to end. If they're so entertaining and interesting. Not that real life isn't interesting, but it's, it's a lot less effort to just dream and watch it. Uh, the rise jerk offs. I don't know if like that came from that video game Altered Beasts, where it goes rise from your grave. Who knows? But that rise jerk offs that sounded so scary in the dream. Uh, you know, a lot of these dreams date back to the late '90s, which is crazy. Reading some of this or hearing about the technology, CD-ROM drives, it's pretty cute. And by now, you know, this was published 07, 09, and since then I've had so many more dreams that I've put some on jonathanlippy.blogspot.com, but others are just sitting in Microsoft Word documents that eventually I'll get around to compiling it all, and I'll probably make another video at that point. To Because uh, some of the newer ones, they're a lot cooler. You know, they're in my 30s, so they're pretty cool. Uh, but be on the lookout for those. I, like I said, some of them are probably on that jonathanlippy.blogspot.com. But the dreams in all these chapters, or all these parts to the chapter 5, have, have been very enjoyable to reread. I haven't read this chapter since, you know, 2009. It was very fun to relive all these and just the, the details and the plot, the subject matter, and how, like, there's an actual storyline to these was really enjoyable so i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did this was very enjoyable to share you know, I know a lot of people are are you know they don't like sharing their dreams out loud because they don't want to be seen as weirdos i'm already seen as a weirdo so you know whatever what i'm saying to people is hey express yourself because we don't even know what reality is if you if you're scared what people think check their belief system because Everybody walks around as if we have everything figured out, science, religion, whatever you are. You think you got it all figured out and you know nothing. All of us know nothing. There might be you know, a group of people, a very small amount that control all of society that know everything. But the masses, the majority of us, we have no idea. So you might as well be yourself. You're going to die anyway. So why die with everything bottled up? Express yourself. That's what Madonna and NWA, Dr. Dre... They all say express yourself. I've been expressing myself to my full capability and now I'm living in correctional facility. No, I've been expressing myself uh, for a very long time. I think I started in eighth grade, you know, just not caring about what society thinks. And life's been a lot more liberating for me since then. You know, instead of having to conform to societal norms, you can't win. They always win. They get to dictate what's real, what's not what's normal, what's weird, and you can never live up to their standards. So you might as well just create your own. That's what I've done. If people think this is weird, I, I'm having so much more fun than they are. I could just go to sleep and have a good time. But in my waking life, I'm having fun too because I'm always expressing everything gets off my chest. I don't have stress. I could, you know, uh, I publish. Life is for creating. You're supposed to create. 
And part of creation is expression. That's what creation is. So express your dreams to your friends and maybe they'll share their dreams with you. And, uh, you know, you never know. You learn about your subconscious there. I mean, apparently, obviously, space, time travel, aliens played a big part into my dreams. But really, those are just the sensational ones that I captured. You know, I have a lot of normal dreams too. They're just pretty boring. But these were the ones that had like, they were worth writing about. The boring ones, why would I waste your time? Last night I dreamed about having a cupcake and it tasted good, you know? So that's, uh, this is chapter five. Like I said, thanks for participating in it with me. And chapter six is entitled Creative Ideas You Can Use. So I'll see you then.